Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. So this week we're focusing specifically on self-tapes for drama school auditions. So they are gonna operate slightly differently to professional auditions, so it's good that we actually kind of separate those out a little bit. And if you are applying and auditioning this year for drama school, you'll know that most application deadlines have gone and you will have probably been given your self-tape deadline for those schools already. But don't panic, you've got plenty of time to get those in. And I've got some pointers, some tips and tricks for how you should navigate doing your self-tape for your drama school auditions. Now I've had the pleasure in the last couple of weeks of actually sitting on audition panels for London-based drama schools watching their first round self-tape auditions. So I've seen firsthand what people are already submitting, so the tips and the tricks that I'm going to give you are going to be really, really important if you haven't submitted your self-tapes already. And it's going to be especially important because if you are brand new to the process of self-taping, then you might be a little bit uncertain about what to expect, how to navigate it, what the kind of technical components are. So this video is designed to help you as best as it can. But before we kick it off, as always, if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel and tell loads of people about it, that would be very much appreciated. Okay, so here we go. These are my six top tips for drama school self-tape auditions. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is read the instructions. So once you submit your application to the drama schools, you will get an email in return with a set of instructions and a self-tape deadline. If you've applied directly to the school, then you should be getting that email either instantaneously or within the next couple of hours. Just be aware that if you're applying through UCAS, then that process could take slightly longer. It could be something like two to three days. That's just because UCAS basically operates as a third party. It kind of goes you through UCAS to get to the drama schools, back to UCAS and then back to you. So the process takes a little while. So don't worry if you haven't got those emails through just yet. So no two self-tapes are ever the same. And for each drama school that you apply, for, there will be a slightly different process that goes along with it. So it's really, really important that you read the instructions that are given to you by the school so that you're actually fulfilling the brief and actually giving them what they're expecting, what they're wanting from you. And that just gets you to start off on a really, really strong footing before you even start performing. So there are drama schools that ask for your self tape to just be one long take, nothing edited, nothing cut out. They want to see your full process in just one take. And there are other drama schools that don't mind a little bit of editing. There will be drama schools that will have particular set lists for speech speeches and other drama schools that don't. So it's really, really important that you read all of that information ahead of time so that you're giving the panels what they want. There are also lots of resources on a lot of the websites that will actually give you guides about how they want your self-tape to be presented. They might even have videos that will take you through a step-by-step -step process of the, what they're wanting from you. Just don't presume that the one self-tape that you shoot is going to be appropriate for every single drama school that you apply for. Some might have some overlap, some might just expect the exact same thing from you, in which case you can send that self-tape multiple times, but if they're asking for different things for particular schools, then you want to be able to cater your self-tapes in accordance with that. The next thing that you're going to want to do is set aside some time to do the self-tape. The thing that I see time and time again is people underestimating the amount of time that it could potentially take to do a self-tape, especially if you are in the early stages of actually doing this as a process, it's gonna take you a little bit longer before you get up to speed and make it a kind of comfortable, go-to, solid process that won't take that long. You're gonna to wanna to consider the fact that you need to find, prepare, and learn your speeches, the actual process of setting up the equipment and making sure that your lighting is good, then there's actually shooting, so executing all of those takes. Then you're gonna to wanna to review all of your takes, all of your footage, to make sure that you look good, you sound good, and everything's ticking along. Then you're going to put all of that footage into a piece of editing software so you can clip out all of the stuff that you don't want, compile it into one take, upload it and transfer it across to the drama school. And all of that takes time. So either set aside a big bulk of time to actually be able to execute it from beginning to end in one go, or allocate particular days to particular tasks. So maybe on the Monday you're preparing and getting your speeches off book. Maybe on the Tuesday you're setting up your equipment and shooting it. Maybe on the Wednesday you're reviewing your footage, transferring it across to the editing software and editing it. And maybe on the Thursday you're uploading it and transferring it across. If you split it up, it might seem a little bit more manageable, or maybe you're one of those people that likes to just be one and done. Whatever your process, just make sure that you are allotting the amount of time that you need to, because the worst thing that you can be doing is rushing this process, because if you rush it, then the quality will go down. You'll also be incredibly anxious, and we don't actually do our best work when we're on edge. So now that you've set aside a little bit of time, you now want to focus 
on the tape itself. And this is specifically on the look and quality of your tape. Now, the big thing that I want you to take away from this is that the audition panel are not looking for high cinematic quality. They're not looking for your self tapes to look like it came out of a big budget film. They don't want it looking that way and they don't want it sounding that way. They are aware that it's probably just you, your phone, and a natural light source like a window that is going to facilitate you being able to execute your self tape. That's what they expect and that's what they want, no more, no less. So don't focus all of your time and energy in making it look like some cinematic masterpiece because it's not going to make a difference in the end. Concentrate on making sure that you are seen, that you are heard, and that you are understood. So if you are seen, that basically means that you are lit evenly. We can see your face and that you're not in patches of shadow. It also means that the video quality is of high standard. I always recommend shooting, uploading, and transferring in 1080p. Nothing lower than that, and actually nothing higher than that. 1080p is high definition. It means that all of your facial features will be sharp, your image won't be pixelated, and that the file size won't be too big. If you're shooting in 720p, then you're going to start to get a little bit of pixelation, the details won't be as sharp, but also if you're shooting in 4k, anything above 1080p, then the file size is going to be massive, and if you're transferring directly across to an audition panel or up to a portal, it may take a really long time, or it might take up too much space. So 1080p is what you should be shooting at. You want to make sure that you're heard so no distracting noises around you. Make sure that windows are closed and people in the house that you're in know that you're shooting and they need to be quiet. Make sure that your microphone is working so that nothing sounds distorted. And you want to make sure that you're understood. Now this is focused specifically on the performance. Making sure that you're making sense of the text and of the language. That you're actually playing something in the moment and you understand what is going on in the character's mind and you're portraying that and getting that across to the audition panel. Now that you've got all of the technical components in place, you're going to start wanting to shoot some takes. And with this, I would say to limit the amount of takes that you actually shoot. Say if you've got two speeches, a song, an intro, potentially a vocal exercise, then that's going to take up a lot of time. And if you're going to be shooting all of those different things multiple times, it's going to take even more time. And the more and more we shoot, the more and more tired we will become. And the more tired we become, the performance ends up suffering. It also means that you're gonna have loads and loads of footage left over that you need to troll through to decide what the best takes are. It can be a bit of a process and something that I don't recommend because it takes up way too much time and you're gonna start stressing about what is and is not a good take. You're gonna start muddying the waters with it. So I would say limit your takes to five. Five takes of one speech, five takes of another speech, and that is the limit. You shouldn't be going above that. Unless there is some kind of technical difficulties, i.e. there's a big loud noise outside, or a lamp falls over, or you forget your lines. If none of that is happening, then you shouldn't be shooting more than five takes. And with each of those takes, you need to be setting an intention, something that you want to focus on during that take, so that you know that you're not just doing it just for the sake of it. So now you've shot all of your footage, now you need to review the footage. And with this, I would always say review your footage objectively. This means focus on what you are doing within the take and not on what you look like and what you sound like. Because quite frankly, what you look and sound like, you can't change that. You can only change what you are doing within the take. Focus on the acting, focus on what you are doing, not on what the physical or audio appearance of your tape is. Focus on how clear your intention is. Whether you're being clear with the text and the language, and if you're honoring shifts and changes within the material itself. Now, if you find it difficult to review your own footage, to actually review your own material ahead of submitting, if you can't really see the wood for the trees on it and you don't know what is high quality and what isn't high quality, and you don't wanna run the risk, then I can help. I offer self-tape review packages, which basically means that you send across your self-tape to me, I watch it, I write notes, and then we both have a 30-minute Zoom call to review the footage and chat through what could potentially be improved before you submit the self-tape for real. I've had lots of clients find that this is a really, really helpful, reassuring thing to actually invest in. So if this is something that you're interested in, then I've put a link here below to contact me to book in a self-tape review slot. And the last point is that I would always recommend submitting your self-tape before the deadline. Because there are lots of technical components that go along with a self-tape, it also means that there are certain things that could potentially go wrong and take up more of your time. So if you were already running low on time, then the stress levels are going to go through the roof if you encounter an obstacle. And the worst thing that you want to be doing is submitting a self-tape 
after a deadline. So if you're able to prepare and execute a self-tape in advance, then that will work in your favor. It means that you can submit comfortably within the deadline window, and it gives you peace of mind knowing that you've got a little bit of time left over if something does potentially go wrong. Now, of course, this isn't always possible. Life does get in the way, and there is gonna be no black mark against you if you do submit on the deadline. It's just something to consider if you want to have a really calm, in control approach to your self-tape process. So to review, for your drama school cell tapes, what you should be concentrating on is reading the instructions sent to you by the school, give yourself the time to execute all of the steps in the process, don't focus on high cinematic quality, instead invest in being seen, being heard and being understood. Limit the amount of takes you do. Review your footage objectively. Focus on what you are doing, not on how you look or sound. And if you can, submit before the deadline. I hope this was really useful and you're feeling a lot more comfortable and confident in approaching your new self-tape process and getting those self-tapes submitted. Now, if you've got any questions, anything that you're unsure about with your self-tape process, or you just wanna share a little bit of your experience, then please comment below. I'd be delighted to get back to you. And of course, make sure that you click like on this video and that you subscribe to the channel. But until next time, thanks so much. Bye.